dramatic change is underway at this very moment. It's a revolution in the way we live, think, work, play, and even dream. Our vision is to advance the state of humanity and human knowledge. We're doing that by launching the first commercial private space station. As national governments focus increasingly on deep space exploration, including the U.S., NASA has made the decision to transition low Earth orbit to the private sector. It's a perfect opportunity to really continue NASA and the other partners' legacy in low Earth orbit, to continue to provide all the services and capabilities that all the users want to make living and working in Earth orbit commonplace. Human spaceflight is one of the most challenging endeavors that I can imagine. Being in space, it's not just physically, but it's almost emotionally a different place. When you get to see the Earth and the layers of the atmosphere from orbit, it's very dramatic and very memorable. The ability to go and explore is inspirational at every level. It kind of reaches back to the roots of why you're in the business in the first place. This is akin in many ways to the advent of the first trade routes, Wall Street, or more recently the internet. What we're witnessing is the birth of an entirely new marketplace in low Earth orbit. What seemed like science fiction 10 or 20 years ago, clearly everybody today knows we can do it. And Axiom is the company that's actually making it happen. Axiom is expanding facilities at the same time launch costs are declining dramatically across the industry, opening up new access to a wide array of customers. There are 20 plus countries that want to send their astronauts to space and the demand for space station services is only going to grow. A national space program has, has quite a, a number of benefits. National pride is part of that. It generates an incredible enthusiasm among young people, an interest in science, technology, engineering, and math education, which not only engages them in positive ways, but also creates a workforce that brings even more benefit to the country's technology sector. In order to grow that space program, you have to, to grow all the stuff that comes with that. The universities, the researchers, the opportunities to fly, that's where the growth is. You've seen with the first few spaceflight participants that part of, of why they went was to share that experience. That's a big piece of what we're trying to offer also. We're offering an experience and a training program that is far different than anyone has offered in the past. There will be a habitation module that'll have room for seven astronauts. They're there to experience microgravity, to experience the view of the planet below. There's private crew berths, each with its own Earth viewing window. It'll have a sound system in it so you can enjoy music while you're enjoying the view. It'll have a big screen TV, the luxurious accommodations. We'll also have a relatively large capability for research and manufacturing. Last year alone, $300 million were spent for research aboard the International Space Station, and $1.2 billion was spent in total on missions to low Earth orbit. That number is positioned to grow to $6 billion per year by the year 2030. We plan to make it very modern in terms of plug and play connectivity with some of the things that are actually in use in laboratories today, so it'll make it a lot easier. If we can do things in microgravity that actually help us have a better understanding of the technology, you'll take that, that seed of insight that you've gained from space and you bring it back to Earth, whole markets are formed as a result. Manufacturing in space is an interesting concept. We've been able to build things in microgravity that are too fragile to do very well on Earth. Protein crystals, semiconductors, fiber optic cable manufacture. It could be very lucrative for companies to do that kind of manufacturing. We haven't really left low Earth orbit since the Apollo days. The next step is to basically increase our permanent human capability beyond low Earth orbit. On a technical level, having a station where you can actually test systems before you try to fly them to Mars is extremely important. In order to conduct deep space missions, a company needs to know that its critical systems all work, and they need a place to test that in space. Axiom Space is that test bed on orbit. Very interesting for companies that have not had the opportunity to advertise from space. 
they can sponsor an astronaut, they can sponsor a module, they can sponsor an experiment on station. There's really six business streams. It's human spaceflight programs, it's tourism, it's research, manufacturing, exploration system demonstration, and then ultimately outreach or uh, advertising. And so we have to accommodate all those markets. So we're building an environment that is user friendly to that entire market, but also enhances the experience for all those markets as well. I don't think there's another combination of talent and experience like this team. Four space shuttle missions as pilot and commander. I was the engineering director at the Johnson Space Center for human spaceflight programs for a decade. I've spent the past 20 years in human spaceflight developing systems for NASA. For 35 years, I've always been in space business. That's what I love I'm so passionate about. I have 17 years experience in law, finance, and business management from startups to Fortune 500 companies specializing in human future technologies ventures. I managed the world's largest network of space investors and led early growth companies for 15 years. I've done more spacewalks than anybody at NASA. I managed the International Space Station for the last 10 years. Beyond the immediate team, Axiom is already working to build a coalition among the broader space community to unite around this shared mission. Our training and flight control of our module will be done by the very same company that is doing it right now for NASA. We have an exclusive relationship with them. We're cooperating uh, with Talus Alinea Space. They've built about 40% of the modules that are on ISS today and they'll build the modules for us. This is a reality. Um, and in four years, we're gonna be on orbit. Shortly thereafter, ISS will retire and we'll be operating the, the world's first commercial space station. Now is a perfect opportunity. We bring the rigor and the safety and the processes, the attention to critical detail, and with the free market competition that goes along with commercializing space, we're going to see exponential growth in this industry. And to be at the forefront of it with Axiom Space is just as exciting as it gets. In this movement, in this exploration of our last, greatest, and final frontier, the next steps depend on all of us and belong to each and every one of us to the world's architects and engineers, teachers, students, and those intrepid souls with the courage to become the first true ambassadors of all mankind. We're the pioneers. The journey of 1,000 miles starts with the first step. This is really, truly the first step into that journey. Our vision is to advance the state of humanity and human knowledge. We're doing that by launching the first commercial private space station. It's a perfect opportunity to really continue NASA and the other partners' legacy in low Earth orbit. To continue to provide all the services and capabilities that all the users want to make living and working in Earth orbit commonplace. This is akin in many ways to the advent of the first trade routes, Wall Street, or more recently the internet. What we're witnessing is the birth of an entirely new marketplace in low Earth orbit. Axiom is expanding facilities at the same time launch costs are declining dramatically across the industry. There's really six business streams. It's human spaceflight programs, it's tourism, it's research, manufacturing, exploration system demonstration, and then ultimately outreach or uh, advertising. And so we have to accommodate all those markets. So we're building an environment that is user friendly to that entire market, but also enhances the experience for all those markets as well. I don't think there's another combination of talent and experience like this team. Four space shuttle missions as pilot and commander. I was the engineering director at the Johnson Space Center for human spaceflight programs for a decade. I've spent the past 20 years in human spaceflight developing systems for NASA. For 35 years, I've always been in space business. That's what I love, I'm so passionate about. I have 17 years experience in law and business management from startups to Fortune 500 companies. I managed the world's largest network of space investors and led early growth companies for 15 years. I've done more spacewalks than anybody at NASA. I managed the International Space Station for the last 10 years. Our training and flight control of our module will be done by the very same company that is doing it right now for NASA. We have an exclusive relationship with them. 
We're cooperating uh, with Talus Selenia Space. They've built about 40% of the modules that are on ISS today, and they'll build the modules for us. This is a reality. Um, in, in four years, we're going to be on orbit. Shortly thereafter, ISS will retire, and we'll be operating the, the world's first commercial space station. Now is a perfect opportunity. We bring the rigor and the safety and the processes, the attention to critical detail, and with the free market competition that goes along with commercializing space, we're going to see exponential growth in this industry. And to be at the forefront of it with Axiom Space is just as exciting as it gets. We're the pioneers. The journey of 1,000 miles starts with the first step.